Hey guys, it's Marissa with the web team. Today I'm going to show you how to add a pop-up to your website. And pop-ups can be used for many different things. Um, one of the popular ways that pop-ups are used today is through to gather emails um, so that you can send them a quick promo. Um, it's used to um, stop exit intents. So if someone's looking to just window shop and they're looking to leave the website, the minute they hover over into the menu bar, that's when it will trigger the pop-up. So there's a lot of different uses for it. But today I'm going to show you how to set up a pop-up for email gathering. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the dashboard of the website. And we're going to come over here to templates. And we're going to click pop-ups. And we're going to say add a new pop-up. And this is fine. And this we're going to say email pop-up. And we're going to say create template. And what's going to load is the Elementor templates that they provide you with. And everybody should have access to these if you have our Elementor websites. So I'm just going to select this one right here in the corner because it could just get us started. And you hit insert and then the pop-up artwork loads. And what we know is that we want to change this so that it fits our industry. So We'll change the headline to um, we love new parties or we love parties. There we go. And then we want to change this to um, get the coolest news and updates let's say news and updates to your inbox directly to your inbox. And then this part, we can change this to whatever. Um, the one thing I will mention is that when you write these things, just talk to them like if you were, they were talking to you in person. These are real people. They understand real conversation. So try not to make it too salesman-y. So what I would say is, um, hey, we would love to have your email address to occasionally send you notes about our upcoming sales and events. We promise to never ever sell your profile. Okay, and then here's the email form. So we don't we we want also a uh, first name. So we're going to add a an additional item. So we have an email field. We want one more item. So I'm just going to click this guy because it duplicates it, and I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to say, well, instead of email, we want this type to be a text field. So it's going to be the name, someone's name. Okay. And then we're going to name this uh, name. Your name. And we're going to change the column width to 50%. Okay, and we're going to come over here to advanced and we're going to say this one is um, name. Let's see what's, what's email showing. Advanced field. Advanced default value. Um, I think, I believe it's full name. Just name. Name. Okay, so that's gonna that that's gonna connect to your I/O account side, and this one is email. Okay, and we want to make sure that the email is set to column width fifty percent. And what that's gonna do is gonna stack them vertically or horizontally. Okay, and then we want the button to be centered. So we're gonna put the button in the middle. And we're going to say we want you to be a 100% button. And we're going to change the name to sign up for savings. 
Okay, that looks good. We want to make this text so that you can read it because right now it's pretty gray. So what I'm gonna do is come right here to this little pencil and I'm gonna select it. And it's going to load the settings on the side. And this is where you would edit the message. And if you come to the style option, we can edit the color. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna make it white so it stands out. And this is also where you can edit the size of the font. So in pixels, you can go bigger. You can make it bolder. You can do a lot of different things from here. Um, but that looks pretty good. Okay, the other thing we want to do is change this photo because this photo has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So when I hit this navigator button in the lower left corner, it brings out that layers palette. And what it does is it basically shows you what the layers, what order the layers are in when they show on screen. So this picture is, looks like it's part of the background. So I'm gonna come up to the top layer. And that's the furthest back layer. I'm gonna select style and that's where the image is. So I wanna switch that image out. I'm gonna select the image and I'm just gonna say, hey, I wanna use, let's use this Dora. All right, okay, but then we also notice it's like right in the way. So let's go to size and let's say auto and that makes it bigger. Let's say contain. Oh, that made it a little bit smaller. So we wanted to, we want this image to lower down in the screen so that we can still see the text. So we're gonna say custom and we're going to push the X, I'm sorry, the Y down. All right, and so what you're seeing at the top now is the repeat of the image. So to, to get that to go away, we're gonna click under repeat, no repeat. Perfect, okay. So let's say we also wanna change this black color because it's a little dark and we want it to be a little bit more festive. We're gonna click the, the handlebar on the black box. That's this handlebar. And we're gonna come over here to style and we're gonna say background color change. So I'm gonna make it a cool purple color. And then we're gonna also change the color of the border. So again, go to the section, the background, because that's the outermost layer. And we're gonna say border. And the border appears to be, I mean, it has to be on the entire thing, but I'm not seeing it. So let's see what this does. Oh, so that's the border on the outside. Okay. So the border for this is actually living in the document settings. So if you hit settings, hit style, you'll see color. There we go. And we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it green, bright green. Let's make it like neon green, yeah. Okay, now we're all done. This looks pretty good. It's ready to work for us. So we're gonna hit publish. This, the next box that comes up are, these are our settings to how we want it to display, what we want it to trigger the pop-up and some additional advanced rules to get more out of your pop-up. So what we wanna say is we want this pop-up to show, where do you want to display your template? We want it to show on the home page. So I'm gonna click add condition. I'm gonna click include. We don't want it on the entire site. We just want it on the home page. So I'm gonna click singular and then I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna say front page. So what this says is it's going to include it on the singular pages named front page. And that's exactly what we want. But we also want it to trigger. We want something to trigger it. So some kind of action that the user does that triggers this pop-up to pop out. So what I'm going to say is we want it to happen on scroll. 50%. So like if someone's scrolling down the page at the 50% mark, pop-up's gonna come out. But let's also say we want it, we wanted it to do on after inactivity. So let's say they load your page up and then they stop moving. 
well, then you could say within 30 seconds or 15 seconds or even two minutes, they get a pop up. This is the on page exit intent. That's the one I was talking about. So we're going to set that one because that's a very popular one today. And we're going to hit save and close. And it saves. And as soon as it's finished saving, we're going to go out and take a look. So I'm going to exit to dashboard, come over here to visit site, and if you right click, you can get it to open up in a new tab. So we'll see what happens. There's our page. Our home page is loading. All right, so no pop up, no pop up, no pop up. So this is a normal, okay, here I am. I come to this website. I take a look at everything. Yeah, I don't really know if I want to be on this website. So I go to leave. As soon as my mouse hovers over into the menu bar, the pop-up comes out. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. Perfect. Okay, so that looks like it works as expected. So let's say we wanted to change that. We don't we don't really like that exit in 10 idea. Like it just didn't work out. If you come over here to the to your toolbar at the top of your homepage and you hit pop up under edit with Elementor, it's going to load the pop up file that we just created so that you can make changes to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we don't want to work with exit intent anymore. We want it to be based on triggers again we got to hit the trigger we want it to be based on scroll and we want it to do the 50 percent scroll so save and close again we're going to come back over here and we're going to right click this and we're going to say okay let's see what, let's take a look at what we did because now we're saying we don't want it to we're having it in a scroll or we've taken the page exit intent off so let's see this is based on scroll. We're going to scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, there it is. It popped up. Sweet. Okay. And that's how you would set a pop up. If you wanted to set the pop up to <clears throat> pop up on any other page, you just come to conditions and you say, hey, I want to add an additional condition. And I want to include it on pages that are in certain categories or pages that are um, specific. So let's say we wanted to add a, a pop-up on the quote form page. So we'll type in um, quote in a quote form and it'll put it on there. Save and close. Okay, so it's the same setting. 50% down the quote page. So we'll come back to your website and we're going to take a look and see what we set. We hit the book now button and that's going to take us to the quote form. And as we scroll down the quote form, we finish up, there's the pop-up. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay. And that's how you would add a pop-up to your website. Okay, thanks guys.